Well, Mike Florio is good for at least one post a day over at profootballtalk.com. Actually, a lot more than that. And I wanted to bring on Mike specifically because I know we're going to talk about Aaron Rodgers. And I know we're going to have Marcellus Wiley on later to talk about what the Packers should do with Aaron Rodgers. Very important when you're talking about the NFL, you have to understand the money. You have to understand what the players' options are, what the team's options are. And Mike Florio does a terrific job, profootballtalk.com, at profootballtalk, had a breakdown of exactly why it's not really in the Packers' hands at this point. Is that right, Mike? Well, look, the Packers, and hello, Ross, good to talk to you. It's been a while. The Packers worried for two years about Aaron Rodgers wanting to leave. At some level, they may be worrying about Aaron Rodgers wanting to stay at a time when they may be ready for him to go. And they've tied their hands with the contract they gave him earlier this year. He's due nearly $60 million next year, fully guaranteed. They cut him. He still gets the money. Now, it would be subject to offset if he goes somewhere else, but no one's going to pay him $60 million next year. They got a huge problem. They got a cap issue they'd have to deal with. Even if they trade him, the cap hit would be crippling. So unless he decides to retire and walks away from that $60 million, and he set up the contract so he could without financial consequence, having to pay back money, for example, he can walk away. If he walks away, problem solved. They moved on to Jordan Love. But if he stays, he's getting that sixty million, and what are they going to do? Put him on the bench and pay him sixty million dollars. So if they're thinking now may be the time to pivot to Jordan Love, and he looked pretty good the other night against the Eagles, Aaron Rodgers is going to have a big say in whether that happens, and that's a wrinkle that the Packers haven't been dealing with. They've been so worried about him leaving. Now they have to worry about him wanting to stay when they may want him to go somewhere else or retire. So because I I had heard that it was basically. Uh a one-year deal, and then sort of we'll see after that in terms of what happens. But it sounds like that's only from the Rodgers' perspective and his ability to get out of it and move on, not really from the Packers' perspective. I'm a little surprised, Mike, that they seemingly didn't consider this possibility that he might play poorly or that they might want to move on to Jordan Love, especially – since next year will be year four for Jordan Love. Like they, they, they totally kind of gave up on Jordan Love? Well, I don't think it's that. I just think that they assumed after they saw Aaron Rodgers win back-to-back MVPs after they used a first-round pick and a fourth-round pick to get Jordan Love because they used the four to trade up to get him. I don't think they expected Aaron Rodgers to fall off the way that he has this year or the team to fall off the way that it has. And with this... Thumb injury, rib injury, Aaron Rodgers openly saying he wants to play until they're mathematically eliminated. I think as a practical matter, they may be at the point where it's done. We see Jordan Love play really well on Sunday night. You're at the point if you're the Packers, I mean, if I was a Packers fan, I'd say, I want to see Jordan Love the rest of the way. Give him some reps. Get him ready for next year. Let's see what we have. they got to make a decision on his fifth-year option by May of 2023. They don't have enough data to come to a good decision as to what to do about Jordan Love for next year and beyond. So I would be very antsy about wanting to see what we have with Jordan Love so we know whether or not we've got a successor in the building to Aaron Rodgers at a time when it feels like Aaron Rodgers is starting to decline. And from his perspective, he holds all the cards. He can do whatever he wants to do. And even if he's inclined to retire, now he'd have to be inclined to walk away from that $60 million, but he may decide to just stick around just to throw a little wrench into the front office's plan. I mean, we've seen that kind of impishness from Aaron Rodgers elsewhere. So I think it's a delicate situation. If the Packers are thinking, hey, we'd like to move on, the the worst thing they could do is let Aaron Rodgers know that that's what they're thinking. Talking with Mike Florio here on the Dan Patrick Show from Pro Football Talk. Polly, remind me to look up impishness during the break Will to do. make sure I fully understand. I think I got it in oh, the context. Come on. You went to I... Princeton. Don't play. <laughs> Don't act like the big dumb rockhead. You went to Princeton. Hey, hey Mike, Even earlier on the show, I head. forgot that it was Cajonis instead of Cajones. I said Cajones for the uh, for the nut shot heard around the world by Christian Pulisic yesterday. I'm glad, by the way, Mike, you mentioned Roger's comments. I feel like I'm the only person that that really bothered. That he came out and publicly said, as long as we're still in it and we're not eliminated, I want to play. 
which, Mike, correct me if I'm wrong here, that intimates that if they are eliminated, that he doesn't want to play. Well, hold on a second. You're making a ton of money, dude. And not only that, do you think David Bakhtiari, who's had three surgeries on that knee and is going to have an arthritic knee the rest of his life, you think he wants to play out the string? You think Mercedes Lewis, Mike, in year 17 at 38 years old, wants to play four or five meaningless games at tight end? I feel like I'm the only one that noticed those comments by Rodgers or took him the task on that. Well, and it didn't surprise me because, Ross, I've thought all along that the moment they were done, that's when he's going to slide to injured reserve because of the thumb injury that we didn't know was broken until after he looked horrible in the fourth quarter against the Tennessee Titans, missing Sammy Watkins when he was wide open on a drive when they could have cut it to a one-score game, missing Alan Lazard horribly over the top, getting booed by the home fans. Then all of a sudden, we hear that it's a broken thumb, and then we hear it's an avulsion fracture where the bone and the ligament are attached. It's amazing he's still playing. All this stuff that was the same injury for the past two months, and he looked pretty damn good against the Cowboys – four days before he didn't look good against the Titans. So it felt to me like it was moving toward sliding to injured reserve at the right time. And the the other thing too, I I don't know, mathematically eliminated and done are two different things. They may not be mathematically eliminated for a while, but it kind of feels like they're done. And I feel like if they lose to the Bears this week and they go to their bye, I don't think he plays on the other end of it because of that thumb injury and because they will, as a practical matter, be done if they don't beat the Bears. They should be able to beat the Bears, though, especially if they don't have Justin Fields. But if they if they lose in Chicago, then they are done. Then why not see what Jordan Love can do? Get the guy some reps and figure out what his ceiling may be. I am now totally fascinated by the idea, Mike, of Jordan Love comes in the last four games, plays awesome, looks great. Packers fans are excited. And Rodgers says to the team, yeah, no, I'm staying. I'm staying. I'm not retiring. Um, You can trade me if you want, but no. I mean, he has the chance to totally reverse the script of him being mad for them screwing him over by drafting Jordan Love. He can go, if he chooses, he can stick it to them to end this thing. And a lot of guys wouldn't want to do that. He strikes me as a guy that wouldn't mind sticking it to them on the way out. Well, Ross, for so much of his career, he was a guy who stayed away from any type of controversy. He was very sensitive about being disliked by anyone. And he's taken that heel turn over the past couple of years where he kind of likes it. I think he kind of digs knowing that there's going to be some people who are behind him and some people who hate him. And he he's he's cool with that. And what better way to be? And he wears black all the time. What is with all the black? I think he kind of likes this, this bad guy image. It's the ultimate bad guy to say to the Packers, sucks for you. You owe me $60 million. If you want to put me on the bench, that's fine, but I want my money. If you want to cut me, that's fine, but I want my money. If you want to trade me, good luck to your salary cap, and then you have to deal with me as the quarterback for whoever you trade me to. Curious to get your thoughts, Mike, on Jeff Saturday. Monday night, didn't call the timeout. Yesterday comes out and says he made a mistake. What I thought was interesting And you and I look at some things the same way. There were a lot of people, especially insiders, Mike, that couldn't wait to pounce on a coaching error or a perceived error by Saturday. I give them credit for taking accountability and saying, yeah, learning experience. But man, people were salivating. They were waiting for that moment to say, see, he screwed up. He shouldn't be the coach. I think we I think I think Mike just froze on us on the Zoom there. Either, well, yeah. either that or my question was that good. Anyway, appreciate having <laughs> Mike on the show. Mike, thank you very much. Check him out at Pro Football Talk. Mike obviously does a terrific job.